Hey, welcome to our second video about ABA terms. This is a YouTube channel work to help you pass the BCBA exam. All material we provided is based on the fifth edition BBA exam requirements. The topic of today's video is ABA terms you must know in BBA exam. This video is presented by BBA mock exam. For more information, you can visit us at www.bbamockexam.com. Let's get started. Our first term is about positive punishment and negative punishment. Positive punishment is when an aversive stimulus, such as a scolding or a timeout, is added to decrease the likelihood of an undesired behavior. For example, if a child is throwing a tantrum in a store, a parent may give them a timeout to decrease the likelihood of the child throwing a tantrum again in the future. Or being assigned extra training when you break the rules or behave in an unprofessional manner. Negative punishment on the other hand, is when a desirable stimulus, such as a toy or a privilege, is removed to decrease the likelihood of an undesired behavior. For instance, if a child hits their sibling, the parent may take away their favorite toy for the day to decrease the likelihood of the child hitting their sibling again. Both positive and negative punishment contingencies can have unintended consequences. Positive punishment can lead to fear or resentment towards the person administering the punishment while negative punishment can lead to feelings of sadness or disappointment. Therefore, it is important to use punishment sparingly and appropriately. The second term is about socially mediated contingency and automatic contingency. Socially mediated contingency refers to a situation where a person's behavior is influenced by the consequences that follow from other people's reactions. In other words, a person's behavior is shaped by the social environment around them. An example of socially mediated contingency might be a child who learns to share their toys because they receive praise and positive attention from their parents and friends. An example of socially mediated contingency might be a person who starts dressing differently after noticing that their friends are dressing in a certain way. They're influenced by the social environment around them and want to fit in with their peer group. Automatic contingency, on the other hand, refers to a situation where a person's behavior is influenced by the immediate consequences that follow from their own actions, without any input or feedback from other people. An example of automatic contingency might be a person who learns to drive more cautiously after experiencing a car accident, because they associate the accident with the negative consequences that followed. An example of automatic contingency might be a person who learns to avoid touching hot stovetops after burning themselves, because they associate touching the stove with the immediate pain and discomfort that follow. While both socially mediated and automatic contingency can be effective in shaping behavior, there are also some potential drawbacks to consider. Socially mediated contingency can sometimes lead to conformity or a lack of independent thinking, as people may feel pressure to conform to social norms or expectations. Automatic contingency, on the other hand, may not be as effective in situations where immediate consequences are not obvious or readily apparent, such as in long-term goals or delayed gratification. The third section is about three important concepts in behavior analysis, unconditioned, conditioned, and generalized reinforcers and punishers. Let's start with unconditioned reinforcers. Inherent and naturally occurring reinforcement. Let's start with some definitions. An unconditioned reinforcer or punisher is something that naturally, without any learning or conditioning, produces a positive or negative response. For example, food is an unconditioned reinforcer for someone who is hungry, and pain is an unconditioned punisher for someone who touches a hot stove. On the other hand, a conditioned reinforcer or punisher is something that has been learned through association with an unconditioned reinforcer or punisher. For example, Money is a conditioned reinforcer because it has been associated with the unconditioned reinforcer of being able to purchase food or other desired items. A generalized reinforcer or punisher is something that has been associated with multiple unconditioned reinforcers or punishers. For example, praise is a generalized reinforcer because it can be associated with different types of unconditioned reinforcers, such as food or attention. A conditioned punisher could be a warning signal such as a red light on a dashboard, which has been associated with the negative consequence of a car engine malfunction. Let's look at some examples. Say you have a child who loves pizza. Pizza is an unconditioned reinforcer for them, meaning it naturally produces a positive response. 
You could then use pizza as a condition reinforcer by pairing it with another behavior you want to reinforce, such as doing their homework. If the child completes their homework, they receive a slice of pizza as a reward, and over time, they start to associate doing homework with the positive experience of eating pizza. Another example could be a teacher who wants to decrease a student's disruptive behavior in class. A timeout, which removes the student from the classroom for a set period of time, can be a generalized punisher because it removes access to all types of unconditioned reinforcers, such as attention from the teacher, social interaction with peers, and the opportunity to learn new material. So, in summary, Unconditioned reinforcers and punishers are natural stimuli that produce positive or negative responses, while conditioned reinforcers and punishers are learned through association with unconditioned stimuli. Generalized reinforcers and punishers are stimuli that have been associated with multiple unconditioned stimuli, and can therefore be used to reinforce or punish a variety of behaviors. The fourth section is operant extinction. Operant extinction is a behavior modification technique that involves ignoring or withholding reinforcement for a previously reinforced behavior. In operant conditioning, reinforcement is anything that strengthens a behavior. So, operant extinction is the process of removing that reinforcement to weaken or extinguish the behavior. Let's have some example. A vending machine that does not deliver a soda after you have paid and pushed the button. Do to previous experience, the reaction is to start pushing the buttons madly. After the extinction burst, the button pushing behavior is decreased and then stops. In summary, operant extinction is a behavior modification technique that involves removing reinforcement for a previously reinforced behavior in order to weaken or extinguish it. It can be used to eliminate undesirable behaviors in both humans and animals, but it's important to be consistent and aware of the potential for an extinction burst. That's all the ABA terms for today's video. We will post more videos about key ABA terms and definitions in BCBA exam. So please follow our channel and let us to help you pass the BCBA exam at the first try. If you wish to study more ABA terms and try real BCBA exams, welcome to visit us at www.bamakexam.com. That's all the content for today's video. Thanks for watching and hope you enjoy it.